Welcome back to the Amazon European Masters. I am a scandal joined by Fox Chopper into our third game of this semi-final. And I'm going to be honest with you, Climbing Cup really, really came back hard. They, they absolutely dominated the early game. They had a lot more tools at their disposal when dealing with Berlin International Gaming and the way they wanted to play. And they turbo stomped they goomba stomped that jason the top <laughs> side of the map and uh, honestly that meant that cabochard was unlocked in some of these smaller skirmishes that took place across the map for sure and, and this might be indicative of the rest of the series because i feel like big maybe a little bit one-dimensional in the place so far from what we've seen up until this point in masters now it might just be that they've been so successful that they haven't needed to change anything uh, but we'll see if they can adapt here because i do think you know that style of like that dog pile team comp might be a little bit might be going out of fashion a little bit here seems like casey have good answers for it Absolutely. I think KC responded in the draft really well. You did hear the analyst desk talk about the fact that, you know, red side is not always the best to lock in your solo laners that early on. But I mean, Kami Cop clearly had the vision for what they wanted to achieve with that. It was very interesting, the little the little game that we saw around Viego. Like, it was up for the whole first draft phase. Didn't get banned on the second side. And then obviously giving it over to um, Syncroft, he really made it work. We're going to see Berlin International Gaming back over on red side this time round. And we'll see the... Uh, fan of the uh, Zinzai, which we've always seen, and then the Aphelios comes through as well. Yeah, I believe the Sorelio has been permabanned too. All of these three champions right now, I, I think, have been taken away every every game. Rika, very good on that Aurelia. Kind of every champion, every player in E-Masters has that one champion that they're really good at. Um, you know, Forsaken, it's LeBlanc. <laughs> for Rika, it's it's uh, it's Aurelia. So for Melanoc, it's Camille. So uh, there's a lot of priority on these kind of champions here. We saw we saw that Camille banned in game one. It was wait, no, it was banned in game two, I believe, and picks in game one. Mm -hmm. um, and so now it's been banned away again here for for KC. And, and I want to see the priority. You know, do you think of something like like the Galio will be a priority again for Big? Do you want to go for that Jarvan Galio? I, I feel like you know without Camille, Jarvan's like the main facilitator for a dogpile comp featuring Galio. Uh, so what does Rika then go into something else, you know, maybe like the Silas or the Twisted Fate? I would absolutely love this. Thank goodness yeah. this is a Lee Sin lock-in. I have done two series with KC now, and both series they have had zero priority over this Lee Sin, and they've got Synchrov and Cabo, who are so good on this pick. Thank goodness finally we're going to get to see them pick it. Yeah, and it has that flexibility between Cabo and Syncroft as well, which is something that's so nice about this pick for KC. I love the adaptation to go for the Rise ban here. It's going to force something a little different out of Kamen Corp, especially from that mid lane. Uh, and now Big, they've got their, their chances to respond. Obviously, Viego seems like the sensible lock-in, uh, and they're going to go for the Varus as well. Varus obviously okay. being a key tool for both of these teams across their games in terms of finding those win cons. No, I think the priority on Thresh has just risen fairly significantly here. Orcs mentioned it on the desk, how he really thought KC should have put more priority on Thresh in the last draft. They didn't, and then, and then he got banned away from them. I, I think, you know, when you've got, like, I think for K to be like, just set him up for success. You, you've had, in game number one, you had tools to protect him, to dive onto him and keep him safe. Ooh. And I think you want to do more of that. It is going to be Seiken's Azir. So not so much skirmish power in that mid lane that we've seen from him with those rise picks. Instead, it is going to be... The bird is the word, and uh, that's a bit more scaling focused right there. A little bit less on that early. And also, I love the fact that the Ezreal has been locked in here. You know, when you see the Varus, you want to have something that can respond in range, and Ezreal is one of the picks that can actually do that. It's why I was a little confused that we didn't see uh, Berlin Intestinal Gaming go for it when we saw the ex Mati lock in of the Varus last time round. Uh, it looks like it will indeed be the Silas locked in for Rika. That has been one of his most played champions here at the European Masters. Uh, has got a lot of good ultimates that he can steal. The Dragon's Rage is a nice one. Obviously, the Emperor's Divide is solid as well. So he's got plenty of ultimates that he can uh, look to take away from Kamin Corp already. But you can already see what Kamin Corp are trying to craft here. They've got a zoning ranged team fight that they're just trying to keep big arms length constantly in these engages and just try to box them in and use the utilize the supreme range of the azir and the ezreal to try and deal with the majority of this team fight threat i was gonna say does big then answer that with hard engage to break the range or do you play your own kind of range game you've got a varus already mm. i was gonna say maybe something like a jace in the solo lane would be kind of good for that but that is going to be jace taken away not going to be able to see that one coming through and then instead, you know, we've still got someone like the cannon open. If you are looking for like, my, that more of like 
forcing the engage, which, which works really well versus range, as I mentioned, uh, then someone like Kennen can be can be a really solid choice right here. Uh, banning away the, the Renekton, I'm not sure if that really, like, I don't think you have to be, well, okay, it's Cabot Shard, sure, you just want to get rid of Renekton anyway, I think that's fine, regardless, you don't have to read too much into that one. Uh, but now we are getting, like, lower and lower down here on, on like, the, the priority picks. We'll see what Cabo wants to go for, if it's not going to be that Lee Sin in the top lane, if that is going to go to Synchro instead, whether he wants to pick a, uh, you know, a different top lane for himself. And I do think, you know, again, the Thresh would be a good choice right here if you do want to go for something that can... Uh, you know, that does play decently around Varus. On the other hand, though, it is lacking engage. So instead, that is going to be that Leona slapped down. Break the range with hard engage. And you do actually have Tiger versus Rakan up and available, which does, you know, provide a very safe lane against the Leona, for instance. Uh, obviously, we know that the Leona is pretty solid into Rakan later on, but like it's it's a very, very good pickup for Tiger Mass. It creates a very safe and easy lane to play, especially if you want to leave Ex Mati by yourself as well. Let's see what uh, what we see gets locked in here. The Jarvan will come through here, wow. so that might be Cabo taking that lease into the top side of the map, which might make the uh, the Cannon pick that you mentioned a little bit harder to play or a little bit harder to think of for Berlin International Gaming. I did quite like the idea of a Cannon because that flank potential onto the Ezreal and the uh, Azir will be could be pretty crucial in terms of engaging these team fights. Uh, we'll see a Braum potentially thought of. It's uh, another team fighting, disengaging style pick, and it will be the Braum that gets locked in. All right, so you got a decent amount of protection right there for, for the people that want to jump in and break your range. You can always have a little bit more coming through from the Braum. Stop that from happening. I like that. What nicely well-rounded comp here for KCs. We're just going to see what that last pick is coming out the top side. It's the second time now Melonic has been given that counter pick top lane. It's just going to be that Nah. Nothing too mm. sexy to write home about. Just chilling right there. So again, you know, you do have a decent amount of like team fighting. Some more engaged this time around as well from both teams. I think it's going to be pretty explosive to see how that early game goes. I would give the edge in scaling over to, to KC. Um, but what's really nice as well about the Bigs team comp is you've got two tanky characters on your side. You've got Nah, you've got Leona. So as far as poke goes, you can have, have those two characters soak up a lot of the a lot of the damage from the Ez, maybe a bit of the poke from from the Azir as well, uh, and that, and that's fine. The worst thing to have is to be playing five squishes into Ez. You get hit by one Q, and whoever tanks it is on half health. That's that's just yeah, that's disaster. But fortunately, the Big won't be happening this game. No, and uh, Big have gone for very aggressive engage as well. Yes, okay, that we have the, the range of the Varus, but they've got very aggressive engage with the Nara and the Leona. And that, to me, there is, you know, there are micro ways that these team fights can play out that can be either make or break for either squad. Like, Nara lands a really influential ult in the middle of a team fight. Suddenly, you're going to get eaten for breakfast by the ability to follow up on those engages from the car, uh, from the uh, the big roster. But you don't quite find that angle. You make it too obvious that Emperor's Divide is going to put you yeah. in your box, and that is where you're going to have soldiers stab that box, as well as <laughs> as well as Ezreal throwing out very hefty cues, as you said. So it's it's really going to come down to how these teams like approach these team fights. This is the third game of the series, Fox Drop, Carmen Corp coming in with the momentum of the previous game, but both teams really at each other's throats, even as you can call it. LFL versus the Dark Region, the Prime League looking for a bit of redemption from previous European Masters, and Carmen Corp looking to do the never before done. Not only would they be the second time winner, which has never happened in a European Masters history to have one organization win two, they would also be back to back we should be setting a new record too the last time the dark region looked good it wasn't last year it was a year before that 2019 when they won it all with big back in the day and really since then they've kind of struggled they've kind of struggled at e masters so far you know, being one on one in the series against the defending champions one of the tournament favorites they've definitely had a good showing but of course no one remembers the fourth place team Unless you're an NLC fan, in which case we'll take anything we can get. Well done, Fnatic, by the way. I'm excited. I think that the early game is going to be really where we see these teams like figure this out. They're going to see that you're going to see these teams uh, like try to either adjust what they did previously or capitalize on what they did well in terms of calming core. But big especially is they need to figure out what they're doing wrong, 
Is it that mid lane prior that has been going so badly, you know, out of their favor from the first Scuttle Crab? How do they gain back the momentum, which has been so key to their very quick wins they've had in previous games? And that's that early game seems to be the the problem for Big in these these matchups. Even the game that they won, they weren't particularly convincing in those first 15 minutes. No, they were behind in the first 15 minutes. Definitely has been KC having the advantage over Big. Uh, in the early stages of the game, that's not something that Big's very used to. They are the best early game team statistically that we have here in EU Masters. Uh, but they're really meeting their maker, meeting their match here against KC. And I do think the skirmishing from Big is pretty good in this game, especially early on. Uh, you know, you, like the Silas into Azir, I think you know, Silas does provide more in the early stages of the game, but it's all about getting that early priority, you know, it's all about who can get the push, who can get the shove, so that you can leave that lane, because obviously at this point right now, you're seeing Riku's just going to get shoved under tower a lot. You've got Seiken who's going to be able to put down a bit of harass. The cool thing about this as well, if he does hit Riku with one of his soldiers, he'll proc his lethal tempo, which will then mean he can actually just right-click down the minions with that auto-attack buff, or that attack speed buff, excuse me, uh, which will work out in his favor as well. That might be the difference right here, getting that mid-prior and being able to unlock Seiken from mid lane. Seiken already in a pretty good spot. Again, you're not expecting Rika to be able to match Seiken's early push. Uh, and Synchroff now is going to look to move aggressively towards Akabane in that jungle. He has got mid lane and bot lane prior, so he's free to make this roam, and he will expect support to come through as he moves into this blue side jungle. You can see Akabane only halfway through this blue buff, and Synchroff happy to go in and fight him for it. Ooh. Doesn't get smite it. Smite fight. Doesn't get it. Doesn't yeah. quite get it. Smite's a little bit too early. Both junglers use their smite there, so it's not up for this crab play. But this might set up Synchro for a double crab. Whenever you have three lane priorities, you know, top lane's pushing, mid lane's pushing, bot lane's pushing. Anytime you've got that situation you don't get double crab, then it's uh, it's kind of unforgivable, especially in professional play. Uh, we'll see what Synchrov decides to do. He has taken that bot one. He's now going for his chickens. See, Akabane's kind of read this and assumes that Synchrov is topside, which is why he's now invading the bot side jungle. But he's... Uh, I don't think, I'm not sure if they saw each other right there. There aren't pings going onto the map. Akabane's actually going for this gank here. He's going to swing by bot side. That's a very aggressive gank. They've got a minion wave to work with. Siaz will find the engage. They jump onto the brawn. Target mass dives away. Happy with the flash, but it's going to bait in the teleport coming through here, it. which gets cancelled. The teleport gets cancelled, and immediately you see Siaz jump back on. Hasn't got the flash available right now. He is in trouble as the counter gank comes through from Synchroft. Siaz low HP, but Matty not willing to commit. And both teams will walk away, lick their wounds, and be happy with the outcome, realistically, with no one dying. A lot of flashes being blown right there. One flash on the side of Big, but two for KC. We'll see if that develops into anything as this game goes on. Some quite aggressive champions down that bot side that can set ganks up, not to mention the junglers themselves. So being able to punish someone who doesn't have flash, it might be something that you can look to do as this game develops right here. As we're going to get a bit of a reset coming through from the junglers. I, I feel like, you know, not putting priority, not putting pressure on this double crab was a... I would have liked to have seen this honestly coming through from KC, but we'll see what happens now because Synchro's not got a reset and he's running to the crab. He doesn't have solo prior anymore either. And Akabane has got his reset, has got that sheen. So that's just going to be a free crab over to the jungler for Big. Yeah, Enrique's chose to stay in that mid, has already teleported back, taken a huge chunk of HP just due to that lane matchup being pretty tough for him. But Akabane will get away with this crab at five minutes into the game. So. Not seeing the same kind of dominance out of Synchroff, and it, I kind of want to peel back to that interview that we had right at the start of the series. Akabane said, I think I'm better. You know, he's not going to get a single camp. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to let Synchroff get away with it. I'm the better jungler. He plays for his team. I play for me. I can carry. Hasn't been the case. Akabane, I think, in every early game, has struggled versus Synchroff. I will say, I'll caveat that. It has been at the behest of uh, Synchroff having extreme priority in the early game, but he hasn't had that impact that maybe he would have liked. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was going to say, if you weren't going to make that caveat, I was going to say, like, the solo diff so far <laughs> early on, <laughs> it's a bit, yeah, Akavani's uh, not had a huge amount to work with, but in this matchup right here specifically, you know, Jarvan isn't so much as a, a, a um, selfish champion, you know, so you, you definitely can get that ahead, get, get a pace on the Jarvan with that farm, as Matty's got to get himself first blood, not even going to fall down either, and look at that minion wave for KC. Kedu is going to feel that one, not just in the death. 
I mean, those minions. Siaz doesn't, doesn't have flash right now. No one there to support him. And Syncroft's coming in for the tower dive. Will dive back towards Syncroft. Actually has now the support, support of Akabani. And Syncroft will just use that as an excuse to back out. You see that he didn't commit with the flag and drag combo because I believe he knew that there was support coming. And that was, a, I think, a good play from Syncroft overall not to heavily commit to that engage. Yeah, absolutely. And a 2v2 kill bot side wasn't what I was expecting out of this, I'll be honest. I thought maybe we'd have some jungle intervention to make that one happy. Kadu didn't even use his flash. Rika now, though, moving towards the top side. Hasn't stolen an ulti, but can still cover Shard's ult. Has his own flash up for that little insect play. Oh, but it's Ooh, not gonna happen. I know, he steals it away. Rika doesn't even find the engage either. He's gonna back off. Kabashad with the cheeky little ward hop out of the <laughs> Nar ultimate and flashes the emote for, uh, for good use to. That was spicy, actually. You can see right now why Cabo is one of the only, if not the only, player here in E Masters picking Lee Sin in that top side. He's very good at this champion, very mechanic mechanically gifted, makes it work. And another example of it right there, slaving his life with a cheeky little ward hop. Something that has been a big priority for uh, Bello International Gaming over the course of these first few games has been that Rift Herald. You can see the CS has roamed over towards this objective very early on and will potentially again invest resources into that as a priority in the next 30 seconds. I expect that to spawn. It's something that they do like to take because it opens up that first tower for them. They have been pretty good at, you know, securing the first tower of the game in most of their games. And I think they usually use that to springboard early game success. Maybe that is something that is so key to the way that Bell International Gaming play. And, and, and last game, I think Kamin caught red that and they, they re reacted very well. Seiken gets locked up immediately into the stolen divide. And that is going to be a kill as Seiken just about drops to Akabane. Beautiful little play from Berlin International Gaming, and surely this sets up the Rift Herald. Great combo right there from Rika. Gets the stun straight into the shuffle steal for Forsaken. And like you say, that should be the Rift Herald right here. KC don't really want to give this one up just yet, but it is a 4v3. AD carries are moving up. But Big have, a, Big have the advantage here. There's no TP forsaken. I don't think the French team wants to contest this, but we'll see what they decide to do. All right, actually, Kenoe goes to 1v1. He actually flashes out from the Mystic Shot, and Kenoe finds the cheeky little 1v1. That will be a nice pickup for him. You could see on the minimap that Matty was waiting for him to walk through that river brush, and with a cheeky flash out of the Mystic Shot, Kenoe escapes a huge chunk of damage and picks up the 1v1, which also keeps that man advantage there for the Rift Herald take. That's why he saved his flash from the first blood play. Because he wanted to use it for that one. I think he may have even used his heal as well. It looks like they have similar cooldowns right there. Really just a summoner diffy between Matty and Kadui there. Because Matty, Matt, yeah, he's got cleanse. Can't really use that in the 1v1 either. Let's take another look at it. Matty knows this one's coming. Throws out his W with ult combo maybe? Or QW? Yeah, so there's the heal. And he's going to flash the mystic shot. Yeah. Oh, that was He's nice. Cheating. He had he had the ace up his up his sleeve. Two summoner spells. Matty wasn't expecting that one. But at least you know both of the carries are getting in on it, getting on the action, getting on the bloodthirstiness. I respect it. Didn't have the true shot barrage, Matty. If Matty had led with true shot barrage, that would have been a different fight. But he just didn't have it available. See, has forced to flush out his own blue side jungle. You can see the calming corp with Saken again. Just roaming out of that mid lane. You, you mentioned unlocking Saken being key to the way that Kamin Corp like to play. Oh, they've done it again. And they will steal that blue buff away. They are, again, unlocking him from being able to move from that mid lane as freely as possible without losing much either. You can see it's difficult for Rika to push that mid lane wave in and, and punish Saken for these roams. I remember it was in game three versus Ucam in the quarterfinals where Casey locked in this Azir. And Saken, we were thinking, you know, you've been playing long for the rest of the series. Azir, you're going to slow down a little bit. And it was the fastest game of the series. Saken finishing 7-0-5 on that Azir. Really just... He's an early game Azir. What can I say? He really knows how to play this champion. He makes it work. And now he's moving towards that top side. So the rest of Big is going to take down the dragon. I believe it might even be like 100% first dragon take as well for Big. KC okay, so not going to contest this one. The first dragon of the game, Berlin International Gaming have kept that up on every single one of these games in this semi-final. Kamin Kolp were able to get into a position of strength and deny that even getting close to the soul realistically last time round. 
And with that first dragon being taken at around 11 minutes, we are going to have a delayed soul compared to usual. We're probably looking at around 26, 27 minutes now for that soul to be uh, coming into effect. Uh, but Bell International Gaming, they're going to drop the Rift Herald bot. Not going to be able to take the tower, but they'll at least get a good chunk of plates in their favor as well. Though I say that, CS has found the engage straight on two target mass who dies and forces the teleport out from Carmine Corp. Saken will be there to stop the Rift Herald going any further, but that is a kill and a load of plates going over to Berlin International Gaming. Melanick here is going to get his Narbar, but shouldn't dedicate it to this play. I was thinking when that bot side happened, you know, you saw Big had four members down for that bot side play. And I was like, okay, so what's KC going to do right here in response? The thing is, like, Synchrov was at his Wolves, and then he re then he recalled. Seiken was pushing mid, and, and his TP was way too late. They didn't really have any kind of response for that play. It's just really just free answer for Big. Just getting getting the plates, getting the kill as well. And the fact that they can even use his TP, way too late, but still it's on cooldown. That's really, really good play right here for Big and an uncharacteristic early game mistake from Casey. Still a very even game though. We're looking at like a 600 gold difference separating Carmine Corp and Big as we head towards this 13 minute mark. Both teams still confident. Bot side has been really strong for Kamin Corp overall. I'd say in general, Melonic has held Kabashad in on that top side of the map this time round. No major top diffy occurring on this game, which is one of the major factors that led Kamin Corp to have such a strong mid game last time round. And you can see that both these teams are really pushing each other to the absolute limits in these games, especially in just in the way they're approaching the early game. Another skirmish potentially opening up on the mid side of the map here. Have to be careful. They go for the engage though. Straight onto Synchrof. We managed to get out with the flag and drag. And actually, we're going to see a huge disengage coming out from Kami Corp. And uh, Big know that with that engage being botched, they can't really go any further. Casey okay, so didn't have Lee in there either. Cabochard is passing towards the bot side. So instead, here they are going to just get that extra reset in. We have an advantage right there. You can see Cabochard has been able to finish up his mythic. Whereas Melanik hasn't quite finished his Sundra right now because he didn't get that reset. Instead, deciding to join with the play. We're still hovering around here together, and I don't think either one of these teams wants to make this play. I think they both want to chill out a little bit. Cabo should be able to find some plates on that bot side. As Rika's going there to pick up the minion wave. I'm just going to get a reset of plays right here. Not too much to write home about. You can see the Melonic should be able to pick up at least one plate in return on the top side of the map. We've got 10 seconds till the plate drops. I think overall, both teams securing a decent number, even in the bot lane and one plate advantage over to Monolik on the top side of the map here as those plates do drop at that 14 minute mark. And we are now, we're a set, we're still so even between these two teams. The second Rift Herald will be spawning relatively soon. Akabani has gone pretty aggressive onto this blue star jungle and Synchrof is very well aware of it as he teleports away. He manages to dodge the flag and drag combo, has got the support of Melonic coming in and we have to use the heart stopper to get away. Flashes Ooh. out of both the divide and the Cataclysm, and now Berlin is such a gaming, they want to force the fight, Melonic has that ult available, does manage to buffer it away as he jumps straight onto the back line where Kabushan is jumping in, as he kicks Kenui into the middle of the fight, and Kabushan makes the play, Carmen Corp get a clean 2-0. It's back and forth right there in the skirmish, but it is Casey that comes out on top. Rika not involved in this play. You check the minimap. He's not there at all. Akabana getting a little bit caught out of position right here. Well played by Synchrov. You want to hold your ultimate until after Akabana's used his ulti. Else he's just going to ult out and your Cataclysm will be for naught. But you can see right here, this is now a five versus three. Big want to take this fight, but you can see Kabashar TPing in and Rika nowhere to be seen. It's just a numbers difference at the end of the day right there. A good attempt from Big to make that play happen. But it's KC coming out on top in these early skirmishes. Something that we've seen quite a lot in this series and this game will be no different. I've got to say, Cavo's teleport right there. Really safe because Milonic used that ultimate and great buffer from Synchrof to stop that Nar ultimate actually landing and finding the kill. And then Kedoui just out of position, unfortunately. Not really due to his fault. His team looked like they were in this position of strength. Malai just goes in, though. He wants a little bit of revenge. No escaping this time round. Finds the 1v1. And will uh, pick up a nice, easy kill under Synchroth. You see what happens develops here. As Kabashad is going to dive away with the safeguard. Uh, Kabani will get the red, though. That's really what he came for. And uh, we'll take it away. Big knowing that with uh, Synchro dead, they don't have the numbers for KC in that bot side. You had four people around bot side, only, uh, yeah, you weren't, you weren't going to have Synchro there, so you know you're going to win that one. Get that red buff out, take a little bit of a victory there. As this next dragon is spawning here, you might be able to rush it down because Synchro has just come out of spawn. He's just come back alive. 
This might just be the second dragon right here for Big. And remember what happened in the previous game where Big were able to build up an early dragon advantage. They then found the engage, they found the picks to get them that third dragon, and then on that big team fight for the fourth dragon, they came out on top with superior team fighting. This one, you know, big are hoping for a repeat of that in game number game number three right here, and we'll see if Casey have the answer for this dragon. I think the question is though, you know, look at Big's comp, like we talked about it a bit in the draft. When it comes to these larger team fights, they kind of need to get it right on first try. Like they need to have that that correct angle, that cor correct engage vector. And if they get it wrong, it's so easy for, for Kami Corp to disengage and then look for the re-engage with Jarvan. So I, I think with, with Big, you know, they've got that one shot to make the team fights work in their favor. If they miss any of those key ultimates, they're in a bit of trouble when it comes to uh, the straight up 5v5s. I think a lot of it also will come down to the positioning of the top laners. I think these guys will make or break the team fights. Both of these ultis coming through from Lee Sin and from Nar are heavy impact ultimates, massive impact ultimates. A good Nar ultimate easily wins you a team fight, and a good Lee Sin ultimate onto a priority target again will win you that team fight. You're going to keep your eyes on Metalik and on Kalashard as these fights develop, and specifically their positioning. It's a lot easier to make a play happen on Lee Sin than it is on Nar, but obviously. Nars ultimate in like at its best will just wipe an entire team. So a lot of pressure being put on these top laners in the solo laners for for this team fight execution. I think one thing that we have been seeing over the course of this game and uh, I think worth noting is the fact that Rika has been able to explore side lane possibilities here and has picked up two turrets for Berlin International Gaming over the last two minutes. Feels like not many people able to match him. He actually uses the Everfrost straight up to Syncroft but won't actually find the engage. You can see it is a three versus five on the mid side of the map. That will be an engage onto Akabane, who again gets straight out of that jump. And also when the re-engage comes through from CS, they're trying to burn Sertakamas now, but he has that shield to keep him alive. Kavashan is there on the front line. Stolen Cataclysm ready for Rika, but we will disengage from the fight. That's a TP advantage now for Big. Saken used it to get into that mid lane. Didn't have a good position, a TP2, to go for a flank perhaps for that Shurima shuffle. But now that is two TPs up for Big. Melanik and Rika both sitting pretty there. And none up for KC. With this dragon spawning in 2 minutes 30, you'd imagine Kavashard will get his TP back up. But it won't be available for Saken. That will be that will be an advantage for Big if they can use it properly. If you drop it mid, don't really think they're expecting to pick up the mid lane tier 1, but it'll do a decent chunk of damage. That is an engage onto Rika right now, who has that Everfrost, and that Javan ultimate is not the best for a dueling Saken with, and you can see the Syncroft is working his way over the True Shot Barrage. Nice little dodge at the last minute here. Rika desperately trying to escape, and he will! It hasn't been the best for Syncroft, as that Cataclysm comes through and forces the flash back out of the Polish jungler. That's a party. It is a party right now. Mex X Mighty and Targamas is there. They do have that turret from Azir just to keep them safe for the time being. Siaz now kicked back into the team fight. He can't escape even with that sunlight on him and he will end up dropping down. Nice little pick off again by Kabashar, just picking that one member out of position from Big and that'll be a kill over to Kami Corp. Both these teams have recognized that a lot of this series has hinged on the success of skirmishes and team fight. That's five on five. That wasn't the top side. It's a big. I think they're going to go for another play. They're going for another play here. Targamas is the target. Melonic on the sidelines doesn't have that. Oh my god, they absolutely fuck Hedui. Matty finds the kill. They'll trade one for one overall as they possess that Jarvan with the engage there. I don't think Hedui is expecting that amount of damage coming through. And it's a one for one trade overall. X Matty really showing off his mechanics on the Ez there. That's the difference between good Ez players and bad Ez players. Less good Ez players is, is whether they're willing to use their E offensively, specifically to trigger that W. But here it is, like it's five people, five people from both sides right here. Again, I just think both teams are recognized. Like whoever wins these skirmishes, whoever wins these team fights, has the upper hand in this series. And whereas KC get that initial pick, it is big that go for the secondary round here. It's only t it's 2v2 right here. Uh, I feel this is quite greedy from big, I'm not going to lie. And look at what x Matty does, right? Watch this. There you go, beautiful. He tags Kedui with the W and then jumps in with the E. That Essence Flux into... I don't know what it's called. Is Arcane a, Shift. The Arcane Shift, that's the one. You can pop the W damage with your E. It's actually a really good tool for getting burst damage down, especially in that early game. And there it is. Kadu's gonna fall, and now we're getting that dance for the dragon.
Yeah, this would be so point for Berlin International Gaming. You can see the Kamin Cup. They've got some item spikes to work with. Double Gore Drinker is up. They have the Leandries too. But it is Ezreal that is really pumping out the damage with both the uh, Sunderer and the Mani Muni ready to go. So some good item spikes. They have that range again. They can deal with the range of the Varus. But the engage comes through straight on to the Azir. And he is dropping down. Sake is taken down. Reek has found the kill. Has to burn the stopwatch to buy some time here. But the Nar ultimate is there. That's a great re-engage. Oh! oh my god, Targamas. You absolute monster. And the disengage from Melonic has to come through as Matty chases down. Runs riot on the back line of Big. And Kavashard finds his rampage kill onto Kenui. Beautiful stuff from Targamus and Carmen Cobb run house. It was a great pick to initiate that fight right there onto Saken for big. And I was thinking, okay, shades of game one, second dragon's done, third dragon spawning, find the pick, take it. That should win condition. But KC this time around had the answer in the fight. Perfect turnaround. Four people going down in the end. Screw that for a dragon, KC says. Let's straight on to this Baron. 22 minutes into the game. Big question now though, who's gonna get this dragon? It's still very important, it's still the third dragon for big. Does KC put some members down, try and contest it, or are they just happy with the Baron? We'll see, because all of big is now bombing it down to that bot site. Could get another Two fight. Yeah, the resets are too uh, too slow right now from big, obviously, and I think Kamen Cup with that empowered recall should be able to get back on the map to contest this. I, I mean, Pig are, just gonna, Pig are just gonna start it up. I mean, they might be able to burst this one out before we can even get Synchrop into the picture. Yeah, legit, this is going to be that third dragon going down. So KC just deciding, you know what, we'll take that Baron. Obviously, Baron gives you a load of gold in your pocket. It's like 1.5k just for picking it up because of all of the, you know, everyone gets 300 gold. Pretty nice stuff right there, plus that Baron buff. We'll see what KC can do with this buff. That's going to be the really important factor right here to decide whether or not giving that dragon was worth. And as you can see right now, x is doing so much damage. Big is going to get caught out. Yeah, I think uh, Kedoui's just dead here. That true shot barrage was devastating, and Syncroft uh, didn't even need to pull the Cataclysm trigger. They had the uh, the edge on him. Easy enough with the Flag and Dragon to locking him up with Targamus. Now be the mid lane tier one dropping. That's a big team fight tool gone. Big wave clear tool gone. And now coming up, we're going to barrel straight down the mid lane. With that Baron buff, it's going to be very easy for them to get a nice shove down in mid. They're doing it top as well. They're working multiple waves right here. Multiple lanes are going for the fight. Rika gets engaged on by that Cataclysm is a flush over the wolf from Synchrof. Low HP bars apiece for big as they back out to their own base. Melonic about to transform. And unfortunately, Kalin Kart can't commit any further than that. But in the meantime, they pick up a tier two tower in top and they have minions barreling down. Very difficult defense now for Berlin International Gaming inside their own base. And the difference in the comp right here for KC having the disengage. Yes, KC is still playing very aggressively with, with Synchrof on that Jarvan. Oh, he's got caught out. He can't flag and drag. He got caught out. The engage comes through from Sia. He's trying to find the killing blow here, but he manages to get away as Rika backed off by X Matty. This Ezreal doing oh. work. And Sia's forced to flash. No one can stop Matty running riot on the front line of this fight. The punish isn't there from Big. And this you can see why this Ezreal pick gets locked in whenever you see the Varus come through. You, you can match that range, but you do have the ability to turn the switch and go full burst mode in these team fights as well. It's so painful. It's so, so tough as well. The engage from big, like, there's a decent amount of engage. You know, you've got the Gnar, you've got the got the Leona, but they're just so slippery on the side of KC. Like, trying to catch an Azir is difficult when you've got the, you got the shuffle, you got, you got that zoom in away, you've got Ez who's slippery as well, Lee Sin is slippery, and then Braum throws down all that counter engage as well. It's really hard for big to find these fights. You know, even in situations where they can find a pick, which is difficult very difficult to do you're seeing that KC are still winning the fights and this is the story of this game so far KC now with that Baron buff is about to expire but doing a lot of work getting towers in top of mid and we are now looking at a strong position with 6,000 gold in favor of Carmin Corp but they do have like this very heavy scaling damage they have the range advantage into these team fights the Synchrof has uh, very aggressively bopped over the wall by his own team, but won't get punished as no one's really there to do so. They are committing Rika to a side lane push here onto a tier two tower by himself. They're maybe hoping that he will be strong enough in his own right to uh, kind of like 1v1 most of the competition. But I think this is a little risky given the engage potential from Kamin Corp. They have good ways to punish you when you're attempting to go for split push strategies. It's definitely risky. Definitely risky. If Kamin Corp just decides to go for like the dive and 
and to break that split push by throwing everything at the four man unit a big, especially with this gold advantage that they have. There won't be much answer for it. I do feel like big. This is kind of their best option right now, to send Rika into a side lane, try and create some pressure, that way you're forcing KC to break the siege so long as you can hold against the dive. Ouch. If that dive, very ouch, if that dive comes forward, then you're in trouble. Uh, but until that point, this is just big trying to hold on and trying to create as much pressure as they can on the map. I mean, you can you can see how I had the... Uh top lane pick for the Lee Sin, the first pick on blue side has been vindicated. Kabashad has been really influential in some of these smaller skirmishes and even the team fights at isolating key targets. I mean, Kedui has been on the receiving end of so many good kicks from Kabashad this game. Uh, he's had a pretty rough one on this Varus. Five, two, five, and two. Not used to being focused as hard. They don't have as many peel tools for the Varus this time round either. As you can see, Rika aggressively pushing between the two tier towers right now. Obviously, we have the soul, the infernal soul spawning up. That would be devastating. That's a game winner for Kamin Corp, and it would help keep Big afloat, I think, if they're able to take it out too. They see, see they're going to find Synchro. He's forced to dive away with the black and drag combo. The cataclysm taken, and they're going to go engage heavily onto Targamus, who's forced to back away. Malolik now taking a huge amount of damage. Kabashad teleports in. It really feels like a bit of a win for Kamin Corp for the time being. You can see that Synchro's actually head over to his own jungle to just re regain a little bit of HP ahead of this dragon fight. Now it's KC on the front foot right here. Big having to run away. Melanik on half health hasn't even gnarled out. In fact, that's just going to be timing out a little bit here. As now he goes, there it is. He's going to go big, but it's way too early right here. He's not going to find a good engage. Let's see if he can actually do something or whether he's just going to completely waste the Meganar. He's hovering. He wants to do something. They need to. They need to. He has got flash available, so I think Kamin Corp will have to be a little careful around this fight. Of course, this is a really important dragon for everybody involved. Rika looks like he's teleporting back into the fight over the dragon pool right now. Kamin Corp, that oh! is the kick. Kedui, Falk focused out by himself, but he's still alive for the time being. Now Rika coming in, looking for an engage. Has the other frost available? Really in the middle of the Empress Divide is there, but no one there to follow up with the damage of the True Shock Barrage. is absolutely bloody nutty. And Kamin Corp absolutely rinse Berlin International Gaming. Oh my god, that damage was nutty! Oh, Cavo, that engage! Mon dieu, what do we get to say? Watch this, watch it! He waits until the, the Mega Nar times out and then rip, 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 boing, and Kedoe is just in the in the dirt right there, sure. He's not gonna dive straight away, but what can he do in that situation? Look at him, he's basically taken out of the fight. Holy moly, KC just absolutely obliterate big in this one. It would be a clean ace, but Syncro dies right at the end of that one. Whew, that is going to be dragging in their pocket as well. Baron going towards the French side, and they are comfortably in the lead right here. 12,000 gold ahead. Oh my goodness. I think all signs are pointing towards advantage KC in this series. I think so. I think it'd be very difficult for Berlin International Gaming to make their way back in from this point. We could be looking at a potential back-to-back -back finalist for Carmine Corp if they can keep this form up throughout the series. It doesn't look like Big have got the answers. That first game feels like a long, distant memory at this point when you are staring down how well KC are playing. Kabashad has been so influential, but ex Matty, he's been a bit quiet this series, but you lock in the Ezreal for him, and he has been absolutely insane. See the engage coming through. Rika, Cataclysm there. Can't escape for the time being. He will get focused down. Not quite dropping, but he will do soon. I see Ogi, the first casualty. The second is Siaz, who was there to back him up. No one there to support, as Milonic was on the wrong side of the map, not even able to teleport in. And you really feel like, with this Baron, we could be looking at the end of the game. This fight's continuing, though. You can see the teleport comes through. A desperate attempt to shove him under the tower. But all he's done is he's put Kenui in the dirt. Melodic, the sleeper agent, all this time for Carmine Corp. And Kedui gets dropped into the floor. Akabane won't be able to defend. This is surely going to a 2-1 advantage for Carmine Corp in this semi-final. As they take down the first Nexus Tower, no one to defend as Siaz comes back alive, but he won't be enough. Surely Carmine Corp are going to find their advantage in this series. Eight seconds on Rika. I don't think he's going to be enough either. Exactly as you say, the LFL are going to move to match points versus the Dark Region on the brink of eliminating Big. And it was a really clean performance in Carmine Cup again. I think Berlin International Gaming, it's that first 15 minutes, they're pretty even. 
Most games, they're pretty even the first 15 minutes where big usually generate big leads. They're not able to do that versus Carmine Corp. And when it came to team fighting, I kind of want to point back to what the desk were talking about pre-series. They were talking about the strength of Carmine Corp, how they like to play more team fight orientated team uh, games. Their games go a little longer to 31 minutes because they are so good at playing around these neutral objectives as a five-man unit. And that last fight you saw where they're able to just combo those ults together, find the big engage, find the big wombo combo. That is a pure demonstration of what makes Carmine Corp so good but I've got to give props to Cabochard mate he absolutely yeah. smurfed it on this lease in this game there, there's two things I would take away from this game firstly is that KC just have threats across the board legit it was the solo laners popping off in game one and two and it was Xmati in game three like that's so hard to deal with a team that just has everyone having carry potential like that and secondly I feel like that game was very reminiscent of game one with what big were, was able to oh, like with the movements they made with, mm. with the picks and like the fights and whatnot uh, but the difference was Casey just had them had an answer every single time and that's I mean that was such a one-sided game you know Casey I just think are the favorites to take this in, in the next game and I think you mentioned as well like when the NAR was it wasn't able to find a good engage we talked about it right at the start if they can't make that engage perfect it didn't work out for them and it didn't work out for big in that fight either now we of course we have more games in this series we could even go all the way to five if big get their act together but in the meantime during the break we've got a special little treat for you we're going to have the warner song of the day which is bcbc be together we'll see you soon
to the decks. It is match point here in our semi-final and Casey is the one to get there. I'm sorry for the predictions trouble, but you're still in still contention. In then, uh, and I mean, talking about K Corp, we, we've been over the fact that this team shows up in team fights, but here it was finally Kabosha enabling everyone. I felt like we should completely stop the broadcast because the things Kabochar was pulling off with his team fights were <laughs> definitely 18 plus. Yeah, I mean, the Lee Sin top isn't something we see as much anymore. It's only really Kabochar bringing it out for the most part. And he's just something else on this champion. That, that kick towards the end, just flawless. And the thing is, the early game wasn't super convincing from K-Corp. There was some skirmishes that went in both directions. The early levels didn't have too much of a snowball compared to what we saw in game one and two, but it was just bringing it back in those late game installments. And I feel like... Kedui was a big factor again in the early game with the Varus. He was pulling out so much damage. Mm -hmm. But then later on, when he was taking out of the fight so easily, everyone would jump in. He would stay alone in the back. And once the Java would find his way in, once Kabushat could get all the way to the back line or kick someone onto Kedui, then suddenly the ADC was completely out of the fight for big. And I felt like at the start that Varus was one of the common denominators for the winning team so far one for Kamen Cop and one mm -hmm. for Big, but I felt like when it came to those team fights, Kabochad stepping up, Mati stepping up on the Ezreal, I felt like K Corp is back in form when it comes to team fighting. Absolutely, I 100% agree. And I think it just came to the point where the Varus just couldn't position safely. And it kind of begs the question, you know, they, they wanted the engage that the Leona offered, but, you know, we haven't seen the Thresh prioritized very heavily and it is that safety net. If you want to play the Varus at max range, it helps keep you safe. Wow, yeah, and I mean, we see we see the amount of damage that Maddie has been able to do with Ezreal, and that's not a yep. champion we've seen him too much on the, so far in the EU Masters, but I mean, we saw how much he was popping off in the LFL with this kind of champion, also allowing Targamas to roam, because when you have Ezreal, Ezreal yeah. yeah, you're safe, you're <laughs> safe, and you can play the game however you want, but uh, based on that, we've been hoping to see some adaptations from both teams, especially in compositions. I feel that's what we expected, uh, especially on mid lane, Azir, Silas, you predicted it. I Trouble. said that this is most likely going to be a blind Silas because I thought that Seikin was going to go towards another global, maybe the Galio, maybe the Twisted Fate, and Silas is really good mm -hmm. at stealing that away. I also thought that maybe the Lee Sin goes into the jungle, which is pretty good to play the Silas together with the VA, go into the Lee Sin, lock him down, get the advantage over there, shut the Lee Sin down earlier on before he starts skirmishing further. Mm -hmm. But it has been a reoccurring effect where big keep counterpicking themselves in the mid lane where it comes to priority. You see Rika got shoved in first from the Azir again, the first two games again onto the Galio versus the Rise. He just cannot get priority for Akabane. And I feel like, you feel like Akabane at this point is like choking. He's trying to make the plays, but if you don't have your prior, if you don't have your mid laner, you're just empty handed. And I think another issue is when we look at how the team fights play out, for Silas and Viego, you're not getting in range of Ezreal. Yeah. You're not yeah. getting in range of Azir. And if you're getting in melee range of Braum, Lee Sin, and Jarvan, you're not going to have a good time. And I think that's the issue is that we want, when we got to those later stages, they just couldn't really function. It was like, can we pick off a key target with Varus ult, with Leona ult? And if they couldn't, they just got stomped. But that being said, I, I got a bit worried, honestly, looking at how the early game went, because we had very high priority on K Corp's lens, but it feels like they got cut off by the early gank. Uh, t tell us how it went. Please. Yeah, so I, I think the big thing for me is we had three lanes with Pryo from K Corp, and seeing that and how game one and two developed, I felt like this was going to be a super one sided game for the side of K Corp. But a critical mistake came in the early levels. We saw Akabane actually get a really solid ga uh, gank off, and there was a lot of impact from it. So, first off, you can see in this situation, uh, go to the start of the clip, sorry. So, we see Synchrov just try to challenge Akabane for the blue buff. He then ends up going for the scuttle here, and his expectation is he thinks that we'll see Akbane head up the top side and go for the top side scuttle. It's the standard play you'd go for, it's the safe one. But instead, what he opts to do is he opts to actually loop round here, and the critical moment comes in when he just sneaks past Syncroft over here and he catches them completely off guard. So Maddie and Targamas are kind of pushed up at this point, and what ends up happening is Akbane's able to get in and go for this gank. And we do have the Jarvan following here, but they end up burning summoners, and the critical moment comes in with the TP. So this is the TP coming from mid lane, and if you look at the map, 
you see that Rika's close enough to end up stopping this. And this is really important because Rika actually just based, TP'd back in, has items, has full health. And so when we play the clip on, the TP ends up getting canceled. And so they don't end up finding a more successful play. It's not that big of a deal overall at face value, but the critical thing that ends up coming from this is we see the lane state get very messed up. Big are allowed to push in this wave, which gives them a good reset. And the critical issue that comes from mid lane is that we see because Seiken isn't able to reset and use his TP to get back to lane, he actually falls behind in the mid lane. At the start of that clip, we actually saw Seiken having a massive advantage. Because of the failed TP, he's not able to reset his lane, he's not able to buy, and we actually see that triple priority lanes that were originally came out for K-Corp don't end up staying that way, which is why it was such a slow early game, because K-Corp just threw away their advantage. Yeah, Fuse, Fuse slip ups a few mistakes on the side of K-Corp, but it didn't stop them from taking the match in the end. And here, guys, it's, game, it's match points. It's match points for K-Corp. One game away from reaching their second back-to-back -back EU Masters Finals. And I want to ask, what do Big need to do and what do K-Corp need to do to find or take it or, I don't know, take it to game five? You go first, Trouble. Big needs priority mid lane. I don't know, they need more fast paced game, but they need something to happen from mid lane because Rika has been locked in this mid lane for the entirety of the series. Get something that unlocks him, get maybe his twisted fade, ban away the rise, get his twisted fade and play against the Azir. Play for the side lanes, grab uh, Melonix, um, Camille, try to play for that. I feel like more early, aggressive, proactive plays is what we know big for. And I feel like they've fallen down to the path that Keikop wants to play the game and that's not big at all. We'll see if they can take it actually because it's do or die here for big as they have one shot left to bring us to silver scrapes let's see if they can turn it around in after the break in game four <laughs>